Hello, it's just a video to show like if your Blu-ray drive is working properly or not, if it's the laser gone or something else. I've removed the Blu-ray drive from the PS3, taken out this screw here, this screw and this screw here. The one with the foot and the other one, so I can remove the top part of the casing. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that bit off and then put it back in the PlayStation to see what it looks like. Okay. So you remove the top part of the cover, okay. take away this little plastic thing that sits on top of the disc, and then plug the Blu-ray back in as if you're putting it back in the PS3. Back in a second. I suggest for this bit you don't use a decent CD because it's going to skip around a little bit. But this basically lets you see if your Blu ray is working as it should do or not. So you plug it all in. Okay, turn it on. Right, and now. If you watch when you put the disc in, you'll see the process is there'll be a a blue the blue ray comes up and reads as a disc and then after that the motor is spin. So if you've got a faulty laser, you'll see the lens bobbing up and down trying to read the CD but there's no laser. But if the laser's alright like this one, you should see you see a little blue see the blue light. That was it realising that it was a, there's a disc there and the Blu-ray was all working as it should do. And now because this isn't a Blu-ray disc, it's using a red laser to read it as opposed to a Blu-ray one. So yeah. Okay, so if you haven't got that blue light, then it's your uh, Blu-rays gone. And you need a new Blu-ray unit. And I've actually fitted one. This was a box it came in. This was a KES 400A. And all it was. It's a bit hard trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time. There's a unit there. This was a knackered one that was on it. There's literally the Blu ray laser went. And you there's a bit of plastic you change on here that it uses to slide up and down on a worm drive and then one rod threads through there the other rod threads through this side and then you plug a ribbon cable in and to get to that you have to undo the five screws on here to take the top off and then take the rest off the bottom it's fairly simple to do but just always make sure you've got the disc ejected before you try and take it apart because otherwise it just becomes a nightmare Okay, but another thing, always touch just the disconnector here and that one there. None of the other metal parts when it's on. Okay, so you get an electric shock. Hope you find this useful.